Hello and welcome to today's lesson. So today we are going to talk about the saddle node bifurcation and we are going to consider when we have a transcendental function. So recall that in our previous video we discussed the saddle node bifurcation and we consider when we have polynomials. So today we are considering a special case when there is a Transcendental function, how do you go about things? So I'm going to look at Randall, a third year student of mathematics, KNUSD. And I'm going to take you through this video or this lesson. Alright, so we are going to illustrate this concept with this particular example here. And you realize that we are supposed to discuss the bifurcation of this. And we have a transcendental function here then 1 plus x. So whenever we have a transcendental function, what we do is that we find the Taylor series of that transcendental function. Because when you find the Taylor series of that transcendental function about x equals 0, you are going to get a polynomial. And you know we always want to work with a polynomial or the prototype of our saddle node bifurcation is of that form, right? So we have a transcendental function here that is ln 1 plus x. So we let f of x represent that. So that means we have to find the Taylor series of f of x, which is the same as ln 1 plus x, and truncate it at the third term. Know that the third term is the term containing x squared, right? And the reason why we truncate it at the third term is that the prototype of the saddle node bifurcation is um, dx dt equals alpha plus or minus beta s squared. So you can see that the highest power here is 2. So that's the reason why we always truncate at the third term. That's a term containing x squared, right? So that means that this is going to be our formula for finding the Taylor series of r in 1 plus x truncating it at the third term. So this is the first term, the second term, and this is the third term. So you see the third term is the term which contains s to the power 2. So our f of x is len 1 plus x. f of 0 means wherever you find x, we put 0 there. So we get len 1, which is 0. Then f prime of x. So it's just the first derivative of this thing here. So since this is a len, we differentiate whatever is here, that becomes our numerator and the thing itself becomes our denominator. When you put in 0, we get 1. Then we find the second derivative of this. So, you no know, f prime of x equals 1 and 1 plus x. So this is the same as 1 plus x always to the power negative 1. Right? So, when you are differentiating this, we first have to um, bring this power here, then we multiply it by subtracting 1 from here, then we differentiate whatever is inside. So when we differentiate what is inside, we get 1. So it is going to give us minus 1 over 1 plus s all squared. I hope you get it. So minus 1 then 1 plus s all squared. So when we put in our x being 0, then we get this. So that means that our f of 0 is 0, our f prime of 0 is 1, and f prime prime of 0 is negative 1. So, meaning the Taylor series for then 1 plus x, truncating it at the third term is this as we can see here. Right. So, the next thing to do is to substitute it into the question. So, wherever we find then 1 plus x, in place of that, we will use this. All right, so in the question, we're having alpha plus x minus ln 1 plus x, but now this is our ln 1 plus x. So x minus s gives us this, then minus minus gives us this. So these two cancel out or they give us zero, and we have this. So it's really have this. This here is of this form. And that's the form of our 
saddle node bifurcation, right? So here that means our beta is simply 1 over 2. Alright, so now we find the fixed point of this clear differential equation here. So to find the fixed point, we put dx dt to 0, right? So when you do that, we we'll get alpha plus x squared over 2 equals 0, and we find x. So when you multiply through by 2, you get 2 alpha plus x squared equals 0. Then you make x squared a subject. So we have this. When you find the square root of both sides, then you get this. So that means that our s12 is equal to this, right? But realize that our alpha here is a parameter and is in the real number. So that means that alpha can take value from negative infinity to positive infinity. And mostly we like to divide it into two regions. So we divide it from negative infinity to zero, then from zero to positive infinity because zero is the bifurcation point. So, but alpha is a parameter. So we consider two regions, alpha less than zero, and alpha greater than zero. So the first region, let's consider when alpha is less than zero. So we call this, right? So when our alpha is less than zero, that means that our alpha here is what? Negative. So we have S12 is equal to plus or minus negative 2 alpha. So we just wrote it from what we had up there, right? So that means that our first fixed point Will be s1 star will be equal to negative 2 but now since our alpha is less than 0 that means instead of positive alpha we get negative alpha here and negative negative this is positive right so we get this and this becomes our first fixed point and our second fixed point too the same thing with the exception of the negative here so we get negative root of 2 alpha so that means now we have two fixed points so we are left with discussing the stability of these two fixed points in the first region that is alpha less than zero so now discussing the stability so i have a to cut alpha plus s squared over two because we had the sdt cut alpha plus s squared over two so always whatever we have here is our f of x so when you find the first derivative with respect to x you're going to get x all right so that means that when you put in our first fixed point s1 star you're going to get root of 2 alpha, which is greater than 0. So that means our first fixed point is unstable. Then when you put in our second fixed point, we're going to get a negative something, which is less than 0. So meaning our second fixed point is asymptotically stable. So that means that in the region alpha less than 0, two fixed points were created. I hope you saw that. And we're able to discuss the stability because the definition of the saddle node bifurcation is that for the saddle node bifurcation two fixed points are created and destroyed so they are created in one region and they are destroyed in the other so since they, are, they were created in the first region we expect them to be destroyed in the second region so let's find out so for the second region when our alpha is greater than zero so recall this it was part of what we had done previously we just root it so our s1 here will be equal to so you know that this in alpha here is greater than zero so that means our alpha is positive so that means here is just the alpha itself so our x1 will be root of two alpha times root of negative one it's just the same thing and recall from your complex analysis that i squared is equal to negative one so that means i is equal to root of negative one so in place of this we have this in the second one two we have negative i root of two alpha so when you go through you can see that All right but you realize that we said our we're working in the real sense or our alpha was a real number so it means that you know the i here means that this is complex it also means that this is also complex so that means that we are out of range here so 
the two fixed points which were created in region one have been destroyed in this region so that means in region two the fixed point the two fixed points are destroyed so you realize that this satisfies the um, definition of a saddle node bifurcation so we see this particular differential equation undergoes a saddle node bifurcation so thank you very much that's how to go about things when you have a transcendental function just know that you have to find the Taylor series of it and the rest is just the normal work that we previously learned so thank you very much don't forget to subscribe